Today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. All right, we are back for Bayou Time, and we always have the PIO for the state police, Ross Brennan, on the set, and he's here again today. But we got a very special guest, and I'm gonna go chain of command today. I'm gonna let uh, Trooper Brennan introduce uh, his boss, and we certainly are glad to have him here. Trooper, good to see you. Same to you. Thank you for having us. So uh, our guest that we have is our new Troop C command. This is Captain uh, Kevin Wes Weber. He uh, took over from Captain Lanny Bajon, who got transferred over to uh, the Troop A commander now. Yeah, Captain, good to have you on board. Good to see you. It's good to be here. Thank you. It's a long journey to, to get to be captain. And, you know, just for clarification, it seems like the Grand Isle connection Looms pretty large. What they teach y'all in Grand Isle? It seems to be working, right? A lot, a lot of great young men come out of Grand Isle, apparently. <laughs> there you go. And your dad, of course, in law enforcement yes, sir. Uh, for a long time. And I guess maybe my, my first question to you, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. It's a big honor. Absolutely. What got you involved in, in law enforcement? Was it seeing your dad in it, or what was it? So as a young child, my mother's uncle by the name of Bud Roy was a trooper out of Troop I. So family's from St. Martinville. As a young child, I used to visit with my grandmother a lot. And um, he used to visit quite frequently in this same uniform I'm wearing today. And I just was always intrigued by that uniform. And it was more of a, you know, oftentimes people want to get into law enforcement in general, but I always had that desire to be a trooper because of that. And... Uh, and as I grew older, you know, I also had a desire to join the military, which I ended up joining the Marine Corps. Yeah. But my ultimate goal was to be here to, you know, in this uniform today. And, and thank you for that. With the thank Marine you. Corps, it, it gives you, you and the sheriff of Terrebonne have something in common. Absolutely. And that's always a proud thing. Y'all y'all hold that well. And that's an endearment kind of thing. And I mean, just talk about your first days as a trooper. Well, what was your first job in law enforcement? Can you take us back there? So in 1995, I uh, had gotten out of the Marine Corps, and I was trying to make the journey to become a trooper. Uh, and at that time, you had to have two years of college or you had to have two years of law enforcement experience. Um, I guess I figured my route was the law enforcement side, so I joined Grand Isle Police Department, mm -hmm. worked there for two years, and I started applying for state police in 1997. Unfortunately, I wasn't accepted in my first go round, but then I reapplied and was accepted in 1999, which was my second time I had applied for state police. And then it began from there. You know, state police has been able to keep that, that uh, I guess, it's a high ranking type of position. And when you get it, you have to, and, and Ross, you know, you, you, you went through it also. But, and, and let me ask Ross, how's it working with a new captain and How's the changeover been? And pretty much the system sort of continues to roll, right? So it's actually been pretty pretty easy. So uh, Captain Ke uh, Kevin Resweber, he was actually the executive officer at the troop. So he was the uh, mm -hmm. number two guy at the troop. So we worked a lot with different projects and uh, had a lot of time uh, together and stuff like that. So him going into that captain role was pretty easy because we already had that working relationship, working on different projects and uh, enforcement efforts and educational efforts and things like that. So in years past, when you would get a new person coming in, you got to learn the personality. You got to learn a little bit about everything. But you made a great point when he steps in. It's almost business as usual. I hate to use that cliche, but it really is, isn't it? Pretty much. And like Captain uh, Lanny Bajron, he uh, wasn't originally at Troop C. He came over. So again, there's that you know, that learning curve, understanding what that person likes and their goals and visions for the troop. But having uh, Captain Rez Weber, who's been at Troop C his whole career, it's pretty easy knowing uh, his personality and his vision and goals and stuff like that uh, coming into the captain role uh, from his prior uh, positions. And, and let me ask Captain uh, Rez Weber, being in that number two position, I mean, you had to have some kind of inkling, or maybe you didn't, that you would get this job. But to be 
in the number two position and to move on up, it sure makes it easier, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, for me, it would have been a lot more challenging to, you know, roll into this position had I not been the executive officer for two and a half years. And uh, you, you correct. I mean, having been the executive officer, there's always that assumption that you're going to be the next guy up. Mm -hmm. But but we've seen in the past that's not always the case. Yeah, sometimes they um, jump it. Yeah. And look, I never, when I took on that role as executive officer, I never, I really didn't look at the, the future as far as to say, my goal was to be the captain because when Captain Lanny Bajron was there, I didn't know how long he would be staying. I'm getting towards the end of my career. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I just went in it and just worked. You know, I did my job, went in every day, gave 100 percent, and then things just kind of fell into place, and I had the opportunity, and, and I was fortunate to get the position. Yeah, and talking to past troopers like <laughs> Jody Blanchard gave you high marks. So you, you must have made a good impression along uh, the way. I hope so. I've, I've always tried to. Yeah, where did you get that from? Was that something instilled in you by your parents, or who did you pick that up from? My father, actually. I, you know, my dad, my dad taught me as a young man. I had a job when I was 14 years old. I worked on trawl boats, 15, mm -hmm. 16, 17 years old every summer till I went to, uh, to I joined the Marine Corps, and he always put a work ethic in me, you know, as long as you work hard, you can be successful. And, and as I've always carried we, that. As we go to a break, once you become a Marine, it never leaves you. That's correct. That discipline and everything else sort of stays with you. And, uh, and we appreciate you, you being here and giving us some time. But we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. A couple of more segments with the captain and the PIO. We'll talk a little business, too, and see what his new philosophy might be. Every captain has a little different twist. So we're going to try to see if the captain will talk about that a little bit. When we come back, don't go away. Today's social media segment is brought to you by South Louisiana Bank. It's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough. We are back with Captain Kevin Ress Weber, Troop C commander here in the area. It didn't start there, though. It started many years back, setting that seed of being a leader. And I would assume, maybe I'm wrong, I would assume the Marines put a lot of that in you. Your father put a lot of that in you. So when you joined Troop C, did you sort of have those leadership abilities you think you needed at the time, or was that sort of? you know, corralled by maybe superiors, and maybe they brought that out even more in you. So I believe, you know, at, as I stated earlier, you know, my father instilled a lot of leadership in me and work ethic. And then, of course, the Marine Corps took a lot of pride in that. Marine Corps takes a lot of pride in leadership. Um, I felt I brought some of that to the state police. However, I've been fortunate along my career. I've, I've gotten to work for a lot of really good leaders, and you always pick up those additional leadership traits from those people, and you try to carry that forward. Yeah. And take us back to your early years as a trooper and sort of how it, the road, the journey to where you are now. Okay, so when I started as a trooper, uh, my goal at that time was to be a master trooper. I didn't really know much about the rank, didn't care much about the rank. I just wanted to be a trooper. I was proud to be a trooper. Um, anybody that worked with me will tell you when I went to work, it was a matter of writing tickets and putting impaired drivers in jail as many mm -hmm. as I could. And I, and I took a lot of enjoyment out of that. And I never really focused on um, the promotional process. Um, I had goals. I wanted to be on the SWAT team. Um, I managed to attain that goal my first year on the job. Mm -hmm. And then I became a part of the sniper team. And I did that for nearly 14 years in my career while I was a trooper. And then um, one of the goals I had was to be in the criminal patrols division of state police. So it took me about 10 years to get into there. And then so that was back in 2010. Mm -hmm. And then I stayed in there for about four years and I was promoted to sergeant out of there with nearly 15 years on the job. Mm -hmm. So I didn't actually get promoted in the department to sergeant until I had, I was just shy of 15 years. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, and then from that point forward, I think that's when I really started to realize the importance of the leadership and being promoted and Mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to affect some positive change Mm -hmm. and you start to get a taste for that and you realize that well if i'm a sergeant and i can affect this change and it's time to be a lieutenant and then just so on and so forth and and um and here i am today yeah troop commander and and let me ask the pio again (laughs) i'm asking from a different because if i ask him he'll he'll give me a very humble answer but (laughs) when he walks in the room he commands respect. I mean, he, he has that air about him. And that, you don't, you're not taught that. You learn that through many years of experience. But what did y'all see in him when y'all heard he was going to be the, the commander? What does he bring to the table, you know, from a generalized trooper standpoint? Well, I mean, him being that troop C his whole career, um, a lot of the guys and girls at the troop, we already we knew him. Um, we knew his personality and things like that. So we've seen his leadership abilities from a sergeant to a lieutenant and even the executive officer at the troop. So we already knew what he was capable of doing. And so we've dealt with him before with different uh, leadership roles like that. But him coming over into the captain's spot, um, we kind of already knew how his work ethic was, what certain things that he expects and, you know, Holds a tight ship, right? But that's mm-hmm. it's to keep and benefit the uh, state police and the troop C area and things like that. So, um, again, just having that somebody who's local, who knows the troopers, who uh, not say grew up with them, but had that working relationship, that career with them, that had that rapport, uh, definitely helps out in the long run uh, for the troopers that are uh, at the troop. Yeah, let me ask the captain, who was your first captain that you worked for? Captain Morg Zerang, who's yeah. the captain who hired me. He was there for a short period of time after yeah. I got hired, I believe. I came out the academy in late 1999, and I want to say he retired in early 2001. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. um, following him was uh, Captain Ralph Mitchell. Yeah. That's, yes, sir. I mean, I saw I saw uh, Mark Zarang at the Edie White Baseball. He must have a grandson that's playing. I saw him, but sort of I see all the older captains, and it brings back a lot of memories because it's it's a very – high position to get appointed to. That's got to make you proud, doesn't it? It does. Um, you know, it's it's really crazy because the day I got promoted, I came to work the, my first day at the troop, and I think I sat in my office all day and I didn't get anything accomplished because I'm sitting in there trying to realize, this, like, does this really happen, you know? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled. I mean, it, it uh, again, looking back on my career, 25 years, and, and looking at some of the commanders I've worked for, I never visualized myself sitting in this seat. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I didn't think I was capable. I just never really focused on that. Mm-hmm. So when it happened, I'm very proud. And, um, again, it's very honorable position to be in. I've had the fortune of seeing people's career, like even the governor today, watch them through his ranks. They, he probably never thought he'd be governor one day. Probably maybe hoped. But when you were named, it changes your life a little bit. Everybody really knows who you are then. Absolutely. And, you know, it used to be, and, and this is life, I guess. When you walk in a room, people at the Rotary are always going to go to the captain first and make sure that you know who they are. Right. And then it sort of changed the way uh, <laughs> you sort of perceived. It could be. I'm, I'm a very humble person. And, I know. Uh, I can I don't, tell. I, I do not. Um, at least so far, I, I haven't changed the person that I am. Right. Um, with the troopers at the troop, anybody in public, I'm just Kevin. You know, I mean, obviously I have a position to hold, and uh, I'm going to res- represent it well, but at the same time, I don't feel any better or any different, so to speak. You I know? think that's why they like you. Maybe so. How was your first meeting with the troop? It went well. We uh, we 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 haven't had our troop meeting yet, okay. but uh, we intend on having one with the entire troop. I have met with half the shift. It's just the logistical side of trying to get everybody in. So I decided to meet with half the troop. Uh, at shift change, we've done one, and we got another one Wednesday morning, and I, mm-hmm. I think it went well. Right. Let's do this. We'll take another break. Let's talk a little uh, recruiting, impaired drivers. Window ten campaign. We'll do a little bit more. We'll take a short break. We'll go to a little business with the state police. When we come back, don't go away. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS. 
Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. All right, we are back with State Police Troop C, and I'll get Jason to give you a shot because we have the captain here, Captain Kevin Ress Weber, and we have the PIO. You see him quite a bit here on the set, Ross Brennan. One team, one dream, one Louisiana. Everybody's sticking to that pretty good. That one stuck pretty hard when the governor came out and, and said that. And, uh, it's teamwork, right, Captain? That's correct. So how is it with the new regime? What are some of the changes, that, if any, that have come about with the state police? Or what's some of the focus maybe that y'all are trying to make sure that that happens? I think right now a big focus with the department, and we're getting a lot of support from the legislators and the governor's office, is the recruiting side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've lost a lot of troopers to attrition over the years. We went several years back without an academy. Uh, it's just hard to catch up with those numbers. So... Uh, they're putting a lot of emphasis on recruiting. Uh, the governor and the legislature have been real supportive with the funding to get us those monies mm -hmm. to do that. And then, as you know, we got the Troop NOLA coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in the process of developing a brand new troop in uh, the New Orleans area. So um, that's helping us well as well. Does it help that the governor <laughs> comes from a law enforcement background? I believe so, absolutely. Mm -hmm. He understands what we're going through, and he understands the importance of... Uh, having good law enforcement. I mean, you, you know, uh, you got to get rid of the crime. So. And then you have a high-ranking former captain of the state police, Frank Basson, and it, it's always good to have somebody on your home team right there because they, they can relate to you. Absolutely, and, and it's a big deal for us here at Troop C because, uh, you know, Colonel Basson worked at Troop C as mm -hmm. a trooper. Mm -hmm. uh, he was there for about nine years, and then, you know, he moved on to Baton Rouge, but he came back as a troop commander, for five years, so, uh, and you look, a lot of people don't realize the current colonel we have, Colonel Hodges, mm -hmm. is uh, was our region major for Region 2, which covers Troop C, Troop I, and Troop D for, what, approximately two years, Ross? Around so he's year. very familiar with us mm -hmm. and what we do down south, and uh, so we got a lot of support in Baton Rouge in this area. Well, good. <clears throat> and, and the recruiting aspect of it all, what put it back somewhat? Was it Ida? Was it uh, covid or was it just a combination of everything? I think it's a combination of everything. And, um, I mean, look, it's no secret. Law enforcement as a whole across the country, uh, I guess, got painted kind of in a bad way. Well, that's true. A yeah. lot of the media and stuff mm -hmm. from some incidents that occurred, um, some isolated incidents across the country. So, and we just seen a shift to where you, a lot of people lost interest in the, getting into law enforcement. So, but I think it's turning back. Um, I have a lot of optimism about what's coming. Like I said, we're getting a lot of support, and we're getting a positive message put out. So, and, and strong leaders can bring that back, and I'm glad to see that they're bringing law enforcement back because without you guys and gals, we'd be in trouble. Yes. I wish the nation would understand that. Let's talk about impaired drivers. I know y'all really – y'all have always focused on it, but sometimes you you're, you really try to get the message out uh, – What's your take on that? What's your avenue on that? So my take on that, and, and that's what I'm going to push to my troopers is, you know, I've always been a, um, I've really always put a lot of effort as a road trooper for many years of, of arresting impaired drivers. That's always been my thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most important things we do. Um, we have about 50% of our fatal crashes that result in impaired drivers, whether it be alcohol, drugs, or, or some other illicit Anything, you know, and, and uh, look, it's, it's gotten better over the years. I think a lot of that's happened because of the, the, the changes in laws and, and the district attorney's office and the, the courts are prosecuting these cases more than they did back in, let's say, the 90s or the 80s. But we still have a lot of impaired drivers out there, and uh, I'm going to push hard on enforcement on that side of the house for all my troopers. Right. And on the window tent campaign, very important that, your troopers have protection, I guess, when you walk up to a vehicle and you can't really see what's in the vehicle. Is that pretty much still uh, the norm through probably every police force, I would say? 
Absolutely. You know, in Windows 10, it's, it, it's taken a further step than that because when you look at it, I mean, you got it obscures a driver's vision uh, view at night, whether they, they want to admit that or not. Pulling out of the intersections, if you got illegally tinted windows, you're not going to see that vehicle as easily as you could have had you not had tinted windows. And for us, from a law enforcement standpoint, especially during the daylight hours, this potentially criminal activity going on inside that vehicle that we cannot see. Um, a lot of the stuff we do, we, we base it off a of driver behavior. Um, a driver's reaction when they see a law enforcement officer on the shoulder tells us a lot about what's going on inside that vehicle or potentially going on. So with these illegal tinted windows, we don't have the luxury of seeing that. And then, of course, you got the seatbelt violations, the child seat uh, violations that we can, you can't, you can't enforce that. And uh, a lot of times, again, with the hit and run crashes, you know, we may be able to track down a vehicle depending upon this vehicle and where it came from. Some of them have multiple drivers that drive certain vehicles from certain houses, and then you're trying to identify a driver, but we can't do it because of the window tent. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues that circle around a window tent that's important to us as law enforcement. I don't think people realize. All right, well, Captain <clears throat> Russ Weber, we appreciate you coming on. And uh, I know you send Ross over here quite a bit. He does a great job representing y'all. Absolutely. And uh, it would be good to see you uh, every now and then. We'd love to have you here. And, Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Yeah, and I uh, would look forward to covering. Talking about everything. joining teams and stuff yeah. like that. We are actively recruiting. We have a uh, accelerated law enforcement only academy that's going to be happening in the fall. So if you're a post-certified officer, that's something that you're interested in. Again, we're actively recruiting for that right now. And start hitting sure. the weights now so that the captain does not look like he, <laughs> he could out there. He stays in shape, I could tell. It's that marine mentality, I could tell. That. But good to see both of y'all. Thank y'all so Thank much. And we appreciate yes, sir. The work that y'all do. All right, we'll take a short break and we'll be back with a lot more here on Bayou Time, so don't go away. Today's social media segment is brought to you by. Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. South Louisiana Bank, it's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough. Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. 